Hey guys, I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and today I'm going to show you how to model this mace. Now, at this point in time, I don't really have a tutorial planned for how to texture it and do the hand painting of the wood or anything else on this mace, but if you want to see that, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you want to see any particular tutorial for modeling any particular weapon or piece of armor or just anything in general, and you'd like to see a tutorial on that, also let me know in the comments below. So, without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, hey, let's build this mace. So, to start off with, let's delete everything by hitting A and then X, which will select all, and then bring up our delete menu, just click delete, and have a good day. From there, we'll hit Shift A and add in a cylinder. Now, we could go ahead and scale the cylinder, but instead, what I want to do is we're going to come over here to the operator panel and change up some settings. Now, the vertices being at 32, I'm okay with, but let's go ahead and set this radius to 0.25, and then set our depth to 5. Now, I could have made this bigger and I will, but for now, uh, we're going to set it to 5. And this will be the middle part of our mace, the part between the handle and the head that you hit people with. Okay, so let's switch to the front orthographic view and tab into edit mode. From here, we're going to switch to face select by hitting 3 on the top of our keyboard or by coming up here and clicking face. And let's grab this bottom face here and hit E to extrude and then type 3 to go down 3 blender units. And come up here at the top, hit E and 2.5 to give us our head. Now the reason we did that rather than just setting our mace to, what is that, 10.5 is because I wanted this ring here, this edge ring right here, uh, to signify the fact that this is the handle and this is the middle shaft part. And the same for up at the top. So now that we've done that, let's hit Alt Select on around this bottom ring here of faces, which will select the entire face loop all the way around. From there, we're going to extrude along normals. So if you have it set to extrude region, just come down here and click extrude along normals and then hit the yellow icon and push it out a bit. Now this is just going to be our handle and perhaps this is a little bit too big. So I'm gonna set this offset down to negative 0.1 and that should be good for me. Now I don't want this uh, sharp transition. So let's actually switch to edge mode by hitting two on the top of our keyboard or by coming up here and clicking edge select. Alt select the edge ring at the top there and then hit G and then Z to move those vertices up. Now when we texture this, as you've already seen, it'll look different and it'll signify a solid transition between here and the rest of our handle, but that's just something I want to do. Maybe I'll make that even go up a little bit higher. Okay, now we'll come down to the bottom of the handle here, select this bottom face, hit control numpad plus, which will allow us to select more. If you don't have a numpad on your keyboard, if you're uh, working on a laptop or a smaller keyboard, you can come up here to select and then select more or less and hit select more, which will grab you one extra ring of vertices in each direction from whatever you have selected. So from here, we're gonna hit X and then dissolve faces to turn that into one face. And the reason I did that is because what I'm about to do next is switch back to edge select mode and hit control B to bevel. Once we've beveled, I can add in and make it look more like a curved base, which I think will give us a more realistic feel to our handle because you won't generally have a just sharp cutoff on a handle when you're dealing with any type of weapon. It just We generally round out things. But if you don't like the way that you did it with the handle, you can come over to the operator panel and set some things differently. You could set the profile down to you know, zero, which gives you a pretty cool like thumping effect for whatever you're working on, but I'm going to keep it at 0.5 just because I want that rounded side. All right, so that's enough for the handle for now. Let's switch over to the top of our head. So we'll grab the entire face loop again. And because we still have the extrude along normals tool selected since we've been using hotkeys, we're going to go ahead and click the yellow icon and drag outward a bit. Now I want to make sure that this is slightly bigger than the handle itself. So we're going to actually just push that out even further. And that's going to give us what I feel will be a good mesh width for the mace head. Uh, so we'll do negative, let's just do negative 3.0, negative 0.30. And then we have our mace head. Now let's come up here to just select this one face. I'm going to switch back to the select tool up here. You can also hit W on your keyboard in order to get that. I'll scale up that face and then move this up on the Z axis. And that will give us kind of the basic overall shape of our head. And I want to do the same thing on this bottom piece here. So I'm not quite sure how I want to. So at this point, I mean, you guys have already seen the finished model, but I'm just kind of making this up on the fly. 
which I have a general design in my head, but we're just kind of making stuff. So there we go. There's the general basis of our head. And what I really want to do now is add in those little like spikes, you know, those curved spikes that uh, maces generally have. So that's what we're going to do. And to do that, what we need to do is select two of these faces at a time. So I'm going to select two. And then because we have 32 vertices, we're actually going to make six of these spikes. So because we have 32 vertices going around our cylinder, we're actually going to make six spikes. And to do that, we're going to grab two here, then skip three, grab another two, skip three more, grab another two. And then because it's an uneven number of uh, faces, we are going to skip four here, which will then allow it to line up perfectly when we're all said and done. So we skipped three uh, between each set and then four between the left and the right side of our mace or between you know one side and the other doesn't really matter which direction it's in okay so for here let's go back to the extrude along normals tool and pull our faces out and that's probably about fair so i have that at uh, negative point four and that'll be good enough for me now what we need to do actually is flatten out these faces and thin them in so that the maces aren't getting these giant spikes coming off of them but that they're getting more thin blades because we're going to add a cutting edge to that okay so in order to get that nice blade effect what we're going to do is we're going to change our transform orientation from global to normal which will allow us to work on the normals of the edges that we have selected for that we're going to hit scale and then x to lock it to the x axis and scale this in a bit and let's say 0.6 is where we want to scale it to and then we'll move it on the normal z axis and we'll move it back uh negative 0.15 okay and then that'll give us a nice little cutting edge which once we make our curve in that it'll look really cool so 0.6 on the scaling and negative 1.5 on the moving let's just do that again real quick and then i will time lapse this so s for scaling x for locking it to the normals x-axis 0.6 you can type that in hit enter g and then z and then negative 0.15, which will get us that nice cutting edge that we want. All right, so for the rest of it, we are going to time-lapse this and uh, I'll see you when it's done. Okay, so there we go. We have a mace, it's got some blades. We can see it's a cutting edge. It looks kind of cool, but we wanna add in that, um, that curvature. So in order to do that, we're going to hit Control R. Now, if you have the loop cut tool selected, you don't use the hotkey, it actually won't work with the hotkey, but we will hit Control R with any other tool and it will activate the loop cut hotkey. Then we'll click and drag and place our curve line wherever we want. We have to select again to confirm. Okay, so I'll switch back to the select brush and what I want to do here is push these out from each other so we're gonna grab the push and pull brush which is under the shrink and fatten brush depending on which one you have access to but it's in that same location down here and then grab the push pull brush and we'll push that out of it now that's gonna go ahead and give us the base of our curve and if you don't like your positioning after you've moved it you can hit GG to activate edge slide and then move it down depending on what you're looking for and I think maybe right about there is gonna be good for me all right so let's go ahead add in another loop cut and place it there and I want to push that inward and another one up here at the top and I'm going to push this in as well now the reason we're doing this is because I'm about to bevel all of this <laughs> so let's go ahead and bevel these edges now I don't want to select these edges in the middle here so I'm going to hit C for circle select and then hold shift to make sure that I'm not selecting uh, any vertices that and edges that I don't want to have selected so we'll select that one again and then C shift will remove the ones that we have selected that we don't want. All right, now that we've got that done, we can hit Control B to bevel, and we'll take it a little bit further and then come over here to clamp overlap, which will give us a nice curve from the base up to the top. And we can increase the segments if we want to, which will give us an even smoother curve, but I think three segments is probably fine here. All right, and then we're gonna do the same with the top. So select the entire ring by hitting Alt-Click, and then we'll time-lapse the deselection. Okay, from here, control B again to bevel. And because we had clamp select the last time, it still got that in its memory. So we do have the ability here to uh, just clamp the overlap immediately, which is pretty good. All right, um, I'm good with that. Now, just to clean up this mesh a little bit, hit A to select everything, go up to mesh, clean up, and then 
uh, merge by distance. And when we do that, we remove 24 vertices. And the reason we wanted to do that is because we had a bunch of vertices stacked on top of each other right up here. And actually, we still have some vertices right on top of each other. So let's go ahead and clean that up a little bit again. Mesh, clean up, merge by distance, and then increase the distance to say 0 0.02 if you've been following me along uh, exactly, which would be hard to do, but just do it until these vertices up here are no longer present. All right, and from there we have our mace. It's pretty basic, it's done. We do have a little bit left to do, but let's go ahead and shade it uh, smooth. Now, when we shade it smooth, which would clean up our edges for us, this is what we get. And the reason we get that is because it's trying to smooth all of these faces together. To fix that, we're gonna come over here to the object data properties, click on normals, and then hit auto smoothing. And from there, we can see there's a little bit uh, going on here, but we can, increase this smooth angle by clicking and dragging and kind of watch until this smooths out. Or if we don't need it to be at 30, we can decrease that smoothing to maybe something like that, which I kind of like. But when we do that, we get these uh, edges here not doing some great stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean, I'm gonna clean this up. So from here to here, I'm gonna select and hit J, which will join them. And then do the same thing on the bottom here, J to join and J to join. From there, actually we can do that all the way at the top, because the problem with our smoothing right now is coming from the fact that we have these little pinching areas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to delete those vertices, which is fine. And then when we do that, we can actually uh, turn on snapping with shift tab and then set that from increment to vertex. And then we'll snap that vertice to there and snap this one to there. And so we're just returning these faces back to their original designs here. Um, and then we can fill this back in. Now, this is a great point where we have a wonderful blender add-on that we need to work with. So it's called F2 and let me do edit preferences and bring this into view here. I'm certainly hoping it's in view at this point because I'm not sure how my recorder does that. But from here, what I want you to do is go to add-ons and then search for F2. With F2 selected, we get this really cool tool um, to fill in these faces. Now, once we have that, we actually do need to clean up the rest of these. So um, what I would say is go back, delete these vertices and then snap the others over and then we'll merge by distance again and select everything mesh merge by distance clean up all right and that'll remove those extra vertices that we had snapped onto each other and then with f2 selected select one edge here and then just hit f going across and it will fill in those faces for you which i think is absolutely wonderful and saves us a lot of time now if we look at what this looks like with smoothing turned on we can see a very clear difference and actually let's drop that back down to 25 because i think maybe 22 because i think it looks better without that smoothing so take a look at the difference between this side that we just fixed and this side that we haven't fixed so i'm going to go ahead and time lapse this section, but I am going to fix up these vertices just the way that I like it. So we're going to a reminder, select everything, hit J to join them, and then delete those vertices right here in the middle that are pinching. And we're gonna do that for both the top and the bottom. All right, so from here on, time lapse, and I'll see you when it's done. Okay, so now that we have separated everything and actually moved everything together to clean up those vertices, we'll just merge by distance again. It removes 40 vertices in my situation. Grab the single edge, FFF, FFF, and do that all the way around. Now that is only possible because of that F2 add-on and that F2 add-on gets really useful, uh, especially if you get into retopology because it allows you to just create two edges and continue on. All right. And there we go. There we have our basic mesh mace, which is pretty good. I love that. But let's come down here, add a couple of details left to the handle and call it completely done. So we're going to just hit Control R here, 
brings up our loop loop cut tool and then scroll up to five. Now, if you're using the loop cut tool itself, you can actually come up here to the top left, click on number of cuts, increase that to five, and then make one cut and be done with it. Now, that said, the next time you go to use the loop cut tool, it will be set at number of cuts five. So the next time we go to added cuts, it adds in five more cuts. So I'm not a huge fan of that implementation, but if you wanna do it that way and remember that that is there, totally up to you. From here, I wanna grab the offset edge loop. So what we're going to do is switch and select uh, this top edge here and drag it down and then come down to the operator panel and set it to uh, 0.1. And we're gonna do that for all of these. Doesn't really matter how far we go, just come back and set it to 0.1. All right, and now that that's done, let's hit W, go back to our select tool and grab each of these uh, rings in the middle. So shift alt select will grab us each one and then come up here We're gonna turn off snapping and change our transform pivot point here from the median point to individual origins And what that's gonna let us do is hit s to scale and scale each of these in Individually without that it would have done this so let's uh, undo that change this back to median point and scale this in and notice that they're going down further and further uh, or going out further and further because it's going towards the median point which is here so definitely make sure you're on individual origins and then take that in and you're good to go now if you don't like that explicit transition uh, between the handle and the shaft here we can try to bevel that maybe get um, maybe drop it down a segment or two and change the profile here actually I kind of like kind of like that which will make it look like there's a, a ring here all right and that is we can do the same thing we're gonna do the same thing up here just to give us a, another ring something like that all right and I am good I'm good with that I like that all right so in uh, in a few minutes which you know is probably a 10 minute video at this point you can um, create a basic mace and that's pretty much all it is and that's the end of this tutorial but I want to show you um, that with a little bit more work you could end up with something like this All right, guys, thanks for watching. And if you have any suggestions for content that you would like to see, how to model a basic whatever, or how to sculpt something, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'm Sir Pinkbeard. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.